especially after lunch when one may need to be alert. Did you know that what, when and how much you eat can affect your energy levels after eating? My name is Gloria Milimu and on this episode of Health Digest, we look at post-lunch dip and how you can prevent it. It's lunch time. You are seated at work, hammering away at the keyboard, or bent over some machine in a factory, or you are tilling away furiously in your farm, or even driving up country to check on your family. Suddenly, you get that nagging feeling of an empty stomach that tells you that you need to take a break for a refill. You are most likely to obey your body by taking a break to dig into your favorite meal. With your tummy full, you head back to work looking forward to a fruitful afternoon full of energy and a dash of swagger. However, a few minutes later, the opposite happens. You start feeling groggy, your energy levels plummet. While you expect it to be full of energy, lethargy kicks in. You can barely walk. You want to sleep, to take another break, or to perhaps call it a day. That nice meal has turned your day upside down and now you can't wait to clock out and go lie down. Mostly if you are, when I have a heavy one, like ugali, during the lunch times, I normally feel sleepy. After eating ugali, maybe, uh, after lunch, I feel sleepy. Most of the time, uh, according to my experience, when I take heavy lunch, like maybe for example ugali, the normal lunch in Kenya, uh, I experience maybe sleepy, dizzy, tired, and all that. Yeah, so majorly I experience that. But late lunch, I feel still energized. Afternoons are always uh, tricky, especially when you are at work, you are exhausted, and you feel like uh, you, 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 you want to take something at least to push you over the afternoon uh, sessions rather when you are when you want to do something or attend to something. Uh, uh, but unfortunately, when you, when, you, when you take food, especially things to do with um, that are carbohydrate in nature, then um, you, 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 get, you get to feel much more exhausted, uh, rather with, um, with the digestion uh, stuffs. So you, you feel dizzy, you, you don't want to, to concentrate, you, you, you struggle with sleep or you struggle to stay awake. Yeah, so it's, it's always not, not easy uh, when in such a condition. One would ask, so what happened? As the meal was supposed to energize you and now it is what is making you want to take a nap? Well, doctors have for a long time warned us that we are what we eat and that the food we consume influences not just the composition of our bodies but also how the various organs and tissues that form the human bulk perform their biological functions. Your sumptuous plate of lunch slowed you down and there is a science behind it. Dr. Mary Leticia Mugambi, a dietitian and lecturer at Technical University of Kenya, explains this correlation. That uh, deep or fatigue or tiredness after lunch is actually can happen after any meal. Most people feel it after lunch, but it's usually can happen any after any meal and the scientific name is called postprandial somnolescence a common cause for this feeling she explains is eating certain types of foods like carbohydrates carbohydrates like white bread 
pasta, rice among others can make one happy after eating but also boost their need to sleep. Hence the reason why most people after eating carbohydrates tend to feel heavier and sluggish after a meal. The food you're eating, you said you're nourishing your body. If it's high carbohydrate, high starch, and I'll talk about the specific starch, causes your blood sugar to go very high, to have a spike, and then come down rapidly. And that coming down rapidly of your blood sugar, is that what you feel? Oh. <laughs> Let's take a, a typical lunch. If it is white, the starch is white ugali, white rice, white bread. There's no fiber there. So the blood sugar will spike up and within an hour and a half, you feel, oh my God. <laughs> so the key is to give your body enough fiber. Breakfast, lunch, supper. The term I'd like you to never forget is the more white your meal, the worse you're going to feel. Or the more high sugar you eat, the worse you will feel because you'll spike up and you'll go down again very rapidly. Experts say a hormone known as insulin is often produced after eating carbohydrate-rich foods. Whereas this hormone produced in the pancreas may be helpful, its excessive production, however, may cause an essential amino acid known as tryptophan to move into the brain. This leads to increased melatonin and serotonin, two known sleep regulators. <laughs> Fiber-rich foods, on the other hand, slow down the absorption of sugar into the body, which means they don't cause blood sugar spike. The key to avoid this is to make sure whatever you eat at your meals, one, is of high fiber, whole grain. Now let's take your typical breakfast. Instead of white bread, get your whole wheat bread or I'll call it brown bread. Most people hear brown bread, they say, ah, okay. But whole wheat or whole grain or mixed grain. Instead of a sugary cereal, white sugary cereal, go for your whole grain, Weetabix, oats. You get the picture? Instead of your white porridge made of white ugali flour, uh, maize flour, mix in some millet, some sorghum. What are you doing here? We are adding fiber so that your blood does not spike up with glucose or sugar and then come down again. Let's go for your lunch. Typical lunch, white ugali skumawiki. Instead of your white ugali, take some sorghum, take some millet, mix in with your ugali flour, makes it brown. Or if your pocket allows you, eat brown ugali, you know, made of millet, sorghum. That way your blood sugar does not spike, it comes and goes down again. Okay. Pocket, it's times are hard. Times are hard. Not everybody can afford brown stuff on their plate. Take your white rice. How do you make it healthier? Have more fiber. Boil your beans, mix it with your rice. So you have your serving of rice and a serving spoon of beans. And together with your skumawiki, then you won't feel that slump later on. While post-lunch dips are natural, other factors that nutritionists say contribute to this feeling is the general makeup of foods. 
For instance, fatty foods like deep fried chicken and chips, which most people would find themselves eating during lunch or any other time, may take longer to digest. When that happens, the body is forced to use a lot of energy to break down the food. Let's go to town center for lunch. Where are we going to end up? the chips joint, <laughs> the, the fast food joint. And what, uh, what are we usually ordering? Chips and sausage, chips and quarter chicken. Uh, look at that plate. It's all white, deep fried, and a small piece of chicken there. What will that do to your blood sugar? It will spike. And uh, be honest, when you eat I've got nothing against chips and sausage. How, how long will you stay full on your chips and sausage or plate of chips? You tell me how long will it take you? Maybe an hour, two, before you say, I think on nanja. Just like sugar high foods, experts say sugary drinks can also make you feel tired. The higher amount of sugar and fat deep fried foods you see it, for whatever reason it takes longer for the food when you eat a high fat uh, food it stays longer in the stomach the stomach does not uh, empty very quickly that's why you stay full for a very long time with fat with a fatty meal so fat is not bad let's get it straight here the fat is not bad. It's if you use too much of it and the type of fat you're using to cook your food. If your fat stays solid at room temperature on the counter, that's not a good fat. But if it stays liquid at room temperature, that's a good fat oil to use. But you shouldn't use more than a teaspoon, maximum a tablespoon while cooking. So deep fried food, let's just say steer away from them. According to experts, not all foods affect the body the same way. High protein foods such as fish, eggs and cheese among others also contain tryptophan, which can also be a factor to your afternoon heaviness as it induces sleep. For most people, according to Dr. Mugambi, it is just a matter of overeating. When one is distracted while eating, for instance, when they are multitasking at work or at home, the brain fails to register that they are eating, so they end up consuming more food. When you are at your office desk and you have things, your brain does not register that you're actually eating. In order for your brain to register that you're eating a meal, you have to sit down, have a plate in front of you, and eat. That's when a signal comes on. It's called the satiety signal. I am full. But there you are, drinking soda. There you are, crisps. There you are. Whatever it is, putting things in your mouth. Your brain is not registering. So the satiety signal does not switch on. The human body is really amazing. Mealtime is mealtime. Sit down, eat, you will register. Same thing. How many times have you been watching a, a television and you're eating I said, oh, remember, I finished my food. When did I finish? I'm not hung. I'm still not full. But you've eaten a full plate, so you go get some more. But when you switch off the TV or you focus that you're actually eating, that's when the full signal comes in. Similarly, what time someone eats also plays a major role in their energy levels after eating. The energy slump, they say, is due to what is known as circadian rhythms of weakness, which takes a dip between 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. 
Circadian rhythms, according to the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention, are internal driven cycles that rise and fall during the 24 hour day. Different researchers have tried to explain the phenomenon behind the feeling. Some researchers say changes in blood circulation, like blood flow to the small intestines, dramatically increases after a person eats. Dr. Tomonori Kishino, a professor of health science at Japan's Kyurin University, says as blood is pumped into the gut to fuel digestion, a corresponding drop in blood flow to the brain could trigger feeling of sleepiness. However, some of a contrary opinion to the hypothesis say that blood flow to the brain does not change after a person eats a meal. There are many myths about uh, why that happens. I'll tell you why it does not happen. A lot of people will say blood is rushing to my stomach so that food can get digested and removes blood from the head. That does not happen. It's not biologically possible. Okay. Another one they will say um, that I've eaten so much uh, I'm taking so much energy to digest. Let's just tell you the truth. It's all about what you have eaten. There is no treatment for post-lunch dip that is scientifically known as postprandial somnolence. But experts say different steps can help one increase their feeling of alertness. To do away with that feeling, I wash my face I, or I go for a walk. When I'm at work, I can maybe just stand from my seat, of course, then maybe stretch or maybe take water, cold water. Yeah, mostly. And then that's when I feel energized a little bit. Uh, but I normally love to have that small break, you know. After lunch, maybe 15 minutes or 20, just to feel okay. Then that's when I'll come back energetic and also going back to work. For me, to counter that feeling, uh, one of the things that I've adapted is that uh, I try to go out and get some uh, to get fresh air so that I can come and continue working. And then maybe take cold water as well as wash up my face for that to counter that feeling. And then I'm good to go and ready to continue with uh, the work that the work or the task that I, I was doing. For me, I don't take heavy meals, and equally, I have to run around because of my job. So mostly you find I'll take light meals and take the heavier meals in the evening. So yeah, I think I just eat healthy, mostly around the lunch hour. What I always do, well, at least I have some, some time to attend to my phone, at least to, 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 get, to engage my mind that I'm doing something. I can t take a walk. Or, or stretch. To beat this feeling, Dr. Mugambi also advises. Another way to avoid this is how much you eat. How many of us have gone to a buffet and you go for not one round of eating, but two rounds and then you put more fruit and more stuff and so you just sit back now and you wonder why am I feeling so, so tired. The key is also to watch the portions. A rule of thumb is when you take a typical plate, half of it should be vegetables. The more colors on your plate, green, red, yellow, bright colors, the better. And the more fiber. A quarter of your plate should be your starch, your garlic, your rice, your chapati. But that's where now the trouble is. If you put too much ugali and white, then you will spike up. The last quarter of your plate is your protein. Protein foods can be the ones that build the body, chicken, fish, meat, anything. All right. Or if you're a vegetarian, uh, green grams known as dengue, your lentils, kamande. Makes sense. So the more colors on your plate, the more fiber you have, the more nutrients you have, more vitamins, more minerals. Okay. And certainly no spiking. Makes sense. <laughs> Last but not least, 
is hydration. The more hydrated you are, the better your body. That's how you avoid that after meal slump. More fiber. Now, not nutrition related, but health related. Everyone needs to move. So yes, after even a lunch meal in your office, don't just sit there. <laughs> Stand up, do some stretches. If there's no space, go out to the car park or walk. The, the point is walk around. Move your body. And not for a long time. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. That's all it takes to re-energize yourself. Whereas a bowl of fruits, juices, or even a glass of milkshake may appear to be a better alternative for some, nutritionists say this will not meet all the nutrients one may require, hence the need to have a proper meal. Overall, no one wants to yawn the afternoon away or miss out on important activities after a meal. Therefore, looking out for what you eat, when and how much will help you remain energized throughout your day. Gloria Milimu, KTN News.